we're going to go ahead and start building out our game in Phaser. For this project, we're going to make use of the Phaser 3 project template that's available on GitHub. Uh, the template was put together by uh, Photon Storm. Uh, one of the nice things about the template is it uses Webpack, which will allow you to take all the JavaScript files you write during development, and it will compile them all together into one build file that you'll use when you deploy your game. Another nice feature is it uses Node.js to install all the dependencies that are required for your project, but it also uses Node to run a local server that you can use for development. That way you don't have to set up a different server for uh, developing your game locally. Uh, since the project requires Node.js to run, um, if, you go to, if you don't have it installed, you can go to nodejs.org and it'll take you to the downloads page uh, for your machine. And you'll have two different options. Uh, one is LTS and one's current. Uh, LTS is the long-term support of Node.js and current has all the latest uh, all the newest, latest, and greatest uh, features. Uh, LTS is recommended for most users, uh, but you're definitely welcome to use Current if you would like to. Um, both of them will work with this project. To install Node, you just click on the version you like to use. Once the installer is downloaded, uh, go ahead and run it, and it will. you just follow through the prompts, and it will install Node.js for you. Um, after it's installed, in your terminal or command prompt, you can do Node, dash B and it'll show you which version of Node.js you're currently uh, running. If you need to install Node.js go ahead and pause the video now and then go ahead and come back to it once it's done. Alright with uh, Node installed on your machine we can go ahead and get a copy of the template. Uh, there's two ways to get a copy of the project. Uh, the first is to use git to clone the repo uh, which will copy all the files into onto your local machine. Uh, the second is if you don't have Git or you're not familiar, you can just download a zip, which will download all these files here for you onto your machine. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do git clone. So we do git clone. It'll go ahead and copy all those files. So you'll see I have the phaser 3 project template. So I'm going to go ahead and go into it. And you'll see all the files are here. Uh, the first thing you have to do to use the template is you need to run the npm install command. So if you're not familiar with npm install, what it does is it looks for a package.json file located in your current directory. And in that file, we list all the dependencies that are needed for our project in order for it to run properly. Uh, it's great because it allows you to share your code with other developers and they'll have the same packages that you're using locally without you actually having to bundle up those packages and hand them off to them. Uh, so you'll see here in package.json and you'll see in the dependencies we have the webpack dev server which will be used for ser uh, which will be our server for running our game locally and then you'll see webpack uh, which is you which will be used to bundle our game and then you'll see we have a requirement uh, another dependency of phaser um, so this will install the phaser um, from the npm repo. So if you run npm install, it'll start fetching all the required dependencies uh, for our project. Uh, this will take a few seconds to run. Alright, so once it completes, uh, you'll see information about how many packages were added for this uh, template. And then if you look in your directory, you're going to see a new folder uh, called node modules. Um, this is where all of the dependencies will be installed for your project. So to run the project, you can do npm run start, and that will start the uh, dev server that we use for, and this will start your uh, server for running your game. Um, if you're not familiar, uh, npm run start, what that does is inside that package.json file, uh, there's a script section. And in here, this is where you can define commands and certain actions that you want to run when you run that command. So you'll see under start, we're telling Webpack to build our project and to start the dev server on port 8000. Uh, so you'll see here that everything compiled successfully and our server is started. So if we go ahead and go to the browser, 
and we go to localhost 8000. You'll see our phaser game template is up and running. Now that the uh, template is up and running, uh, we're going to go ahead and take a look at some of the files that are contained in the template. Um, so there's quite a few files in our folder. Uh, we're just going to focus on the key ones that are needed for our game. Uh, so index.html, it's a basic HTML file. You see that there's a script in here that uh, points to project.bundle.js. Uh, this is in our build folder, and this is the file that gets compiled when the uh, webpack command is running. Uh, the source folder, uh, this will be where all of your JavaScript code is going to live for your phaser game. Uh, so you'll see inside here we have our basic phaser configuration, uh, and we create a new phaser game, and then it has the default preload and create methods. Um, and for the demo purpose, they're uh, loading an image with a tween to animate it. And then the assets folder, this is where we're going to put all of our images, audio, tile maps, and everything that's an asset to our game will go in here. And then lastly, the build folder, this is uh, where Webpack bundles all of our JavaScript code and creates the project.bundle file. Uh, with the project template in place, uh, we're going to go ahead and start refactoring the code a little bit. We could keep all of our logic for our game inside index.js here. However, as our game grows, uh, you'll see it becomes a lot harder to manage with everything inside one file. Uh, but we're also not really utilizing Webpack to its fullest. Because um, with Webpack, we can take all of our files and compile it into one source file uh, when we go to export out our game. Uh, so the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is inside our project folder, inside the source folder, uh, let's go ahead and make a new folder, and we're going to call it config. And inside there, we're just going to go ahead and call it a uh, new file called config.js. Uh, so we're going to take the config variable from index.js, and we're going to go ahead and copy that logic over to our config.js file. And we're going to make some adjustments. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just do export default and then our config object. What export default does is it allows us to take our JavaScript code inside this file and import it inside another file and we'll have access to that code that we export. Um, so we can export our variables, uh, functions, uh, anything that we want to reuse inside another file, uh, we can go ahead and export it out of here and then make it available. Uh, so we'll go ahead and we're going to save our file. We're going to come back to index.js. Now to actually use that code, uh, we're going to go ahead and do import. And we're going to do config from and then the path to our config file. So we have our config folder and then config. So after we did that, you'll see that our game stops running. And the reason for that is we're trying to access our scene functions, um, and they don't actually exist in this file. Uh, so what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and remove our scene property from our config object. And instead, when we're creating our new phaser game, uh, we'll go ahead and we'll assign our scenes uh, at that time. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take our scene functions and we're going to go ahead and create a new file that will actually hold our game scene. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and come over to our source folder and we'll make a new folder and we're going to go ahead and call it scenes. And in here we're going to go ahead and create a new file called game scene.js. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and import phaser. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a class. And we're going to call it game scene. And we're going to go ahead and extend the phaser.scene class. Uh, so if you're not familiar with classes in JavaScript, um, it is just syntactical sugar over the object and the prototypes that we're used to working with already uh, because JavaScript is a classless language, um, but one of the benefits of using them is it offers a much nicer and clearer syntax when we want to go ahead and create these uh, new objects. Um, 
So because our game scene is going to extend the phaser scene class, the first thing we need to do is add a constructor. Um, and in this constructor, we want to go ahead and call super. And we want to go ahead and pass it the key of our scene. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and call it game. Uh, so anytime you extend a class, the first thing you have to do is call super. Uh, which allows you to pass the properties to the constructor of the parent class. Alright, uh, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to take our preload and create functions and we're going to go ahead and copy those over into our game scene file. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do preload and we're going to go ahead and copy the logic for the preload function and we'll do create and we'll go ahead and copy that logic for the create method and we'll just go ahead and get rid of the tween uh, since we'll be removing it in our game. So last thing we need to do in our game scene is we actually need to export out our class to make it available uh, in index.js. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and do export default and save and we're going to go ahead and come back to our index.js file and we're going to import game scene from scenes game scene. Uh, since these are now in the game scene file we'll go ahead and we'll delete those functions. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new class called game and we're going to have this extend the phaser dot game class and because uh, we're extending the the phaser dot game class we need to add a constructor and in here uh, we're going to call super and we're going to go ahead and pass it the config object that we imported uh, so the next thing we're going to do is we want to add our scene to our game class uh, so we do that by doing this.scene.add. So the add method takes two arguments. Uh, the first is a string, uh, which is a key to how we'll reference our scene. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and call it game. And the second argument is the actual game scene itself. Uh, then the last thing we need to do is we just need to do this.scene.start and we'll have it start our game scene. And the next thing we need to do is we actually need to um, create a new instance of our game class. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to listen for the window.onload event. And when this event fires, we're going to go ahead and trigger this function. And we'll go ahead and we'll create our new instance inside this function. So we're just going to do window.game equals a new game, so a new instance of our class. We'll go ahead and we'll save. And the last thing we need to do is we need to come back to our config object and we just need to remove the scene property uh, from our config object. Um, and the reason we're doing that is since we're importing our scenes over here and then actually adding them to our game class, uh, we don't actually need to define it inside our config file. And then let's go ahead and remove our instance of our game right here and save. So after you save, uh, you'll see that the phaser game reloads and the local is now uh, displaying properly. And with our basic template working, uh, that brings this video to our end. And our next video, we're going to go ahead and add in the assets that we'll be using in the rest of the game. And we will also start creating the rest of the scenes that will be used and we'll add in the logic to connect all of those scenes together.